Hello everyone, welcome to Mastermind. In this video, let us continue our series on top multiple choice questions. This is the part 3. In this also we will be discussing 5 most important questions. So most importantly, in this part we will be discussing most important questions related to economy. So there are some basic points related to economy also, which has been asked previously in the examinations. Those will be discussing in this particular part. So let us start with the simple one in the first, first place over here. What is government's trade policy? What is the government's trade policy? A. It is saying that promotion of exports or export promotion. B. It is import substitution. C. It is saying both, both of the above. D. It is telling none of the above. Now, how will the government make more revenue? Okay. If you are asking that particular question, that is the trade policy, right? So, trade is whatever you are exporting and whatever you are importing. So how will be how will the government be earning more? Let us consider this is India. Let us consider this to be India and let's take this to be USA. So let us say India has sent or exported India has exported 100 kg 100 kg of rice. Just an example over here to understand this concept. India has exported 100 kg of rice to USA. And India has, let's say, earned 1000 rupees. India has earned 1000 rupees. India sent 100 kg of rice to USA and India has earned 1000 rupees. Now, from USA, India has, let's say, imported wheat. Wheat, it is imported. Now, at least we know what is export and import, right? So, whatever goes out of the country is export. Whatever comes into the country is import, correct? So, India has sent rice. So, it went out of our country. So, hence it is export. So, 100 kg of rice, we have earned 1000 rupees. And we have imported wheat, which is also 100 kg only. But we have paid rupees 50 for this. Rupees, let's say 500 for this. Okay? So, we have exported for rupees thousand that is we have earned rupees thousand correct because we have sold it to usa and hence we earned thousand but we bought it from usa and hence it is imported we spent 500 so india is still remaining with 500 correct so india is having trade surplus you can call it as trade surplus so this is the first thing which you have to remember so if our exports if our exports are more than import, if exports are more than import, then the economy will have trade surplus. Economy will have trade surplus. So I'm just taking very simple example in order to understand economy over here. Now let us say the let us take the same scenario. We have exported 100 kg of rice and we have earned rupees thousand. Next we have imported 100 kg of wheat for this we have paid rupees 2000 correct we have paid rupees 2000 now we are having negative 1000 rupees correct this situation is called as deficit trade deficit okay i i hope you are able to understand this that is when import is more than export we are having deficit we are having deficit now if the country has to grow what should be its trade policy Obviously, you have to be exporting more. So, if you are promoting exports, if you are promoting export, then your trade is better. Okay. So, the first statement seems to be correct. Next one, it is telling import substitution. Now, what is import substitution? That is, rather than importing wheat from here, what if we are substituting that and we are growing it over here only? in india only domestically only if we are able to produce then we need not import this correct at that point of a time this deficit will not occur and hence even the second statement is true so here the answer is c both of the above that is export promotion and import substitution usually the economy concentrate on improving it its export and reducing the imports now if you are, if you are taking india's example then we are saying that we have to be producing a lot of renewable energy correct our focus is more on renewable energy that is because we are concentrating our highest import itself or we are spending a lot of our forex reserves on importing of this crude oil itself 
on this importing of crude oil itself so if we are able to cater that with the help of renewable energy from other sources from alternative sources then our dependency on crude oil will reduce let us say we are importing for 100 rupees so if that production itself happens in india itself then we might reduce it to let's say 90 rupees and hence we are saving that 10 rupees correct at that point of a time it will be helpful for the economy so that is why government concentrates more on the trade policy more on the promotion of exports and substitution of the import i hope you have understood about this particular point so let us expand on these only later on let us move on to the second one second question what factors changed the landscape of india what factor changed the landscape of india most in the last century so the question itself is saying that mostly all the options are true but which of the following is more correct or if it if a is better and b is best then the answer is b only so usually our multiple choice questions are like that only right that is most of the times we feel even a is true and b is true but the question itself is asking which is more correct correct so in that case this is also the similar question what factors changed the landscape of india most in the last century in last 100 years is it irrigation is it movement of people from rural to urban areas is it industrialization or is it deforestation so straight away by using aptitude for this multiple choice questions you can eliminate this option correct which is deforestation then you'll be remaining with irrigation movement of people from rural to urban areas and industrialization here this was previously asked a question here the answer is movement of people from rural to urban areas now it doesn't mean that irrigation did not change the landscape of india or industrialization did not change the landscape of india irrigation did change the landscape of india for example irrigation it improved a lot of agricultural productivity our agricultural productivity increased with the help of irrigation we turned a lot of barren land into fertile land so we used uh, we used this method in order to cultivate more correct so the implementation of irrigation projects itself has played crucial role in changing the landscape of india it helped in agricultural practices increased productivity the previously whatever were the dry regions those were also used for the cultivation of crops correct so this this is also one of the answers next industrialization we saw that industrialization actually brought a lot of changes in the landscape of india that is there were lot of industries there were lot of factories which were established for the development of the industrial areas and because of these only urban areas grew urban centers grew so most of these industries were established in the urban areas or in the urban uh, in near the suburban areas and because of that only it grew and because of that only in order to provide alternative employment for the rural areas we started special economic zones etc and those those were another initiatives which were started now industrial activities also re resulted in lot of other changes that is there were increased pollution and it increased deforestation it increased deforestation the natural resources started to decrease and then the landscapes also were altered in many ways but why do you consider movement of people from rural areas to urban areas as more better answer because it led to rapid urbanization it led to rapid urbanization that is rapidly there were growth of cities also and towns also rapidly there were growth so these were long term growth which is irrigation and industrialization but rapidly you can see that cities and the towns they grew rapidly also this migration of people from rural areas to urban area led to expansion of cities correct the cities expanded and because people started to come and live in one particular place there had to be amenities which had to be provided because there were lot of demands from these particular people that is let's say they were earning let's say just 100 rupees in rural area example they moved to urban areas maybe to work in some other sector etc and they started to earn 200 rupees now so they might be sending 100 rupees back home and 100 rupees is for their utilization 
correct so they have to be given a lot of amenities for example they have to be given houses on rent they have to be given a water facilities sanitation facilities and then there has to be shopping centers etc so it led to a rapid expansion expansion of the cities and because of that even infrastructure developed then the agricultural lands itself transformed into residential areas and commercial areas and hence this is most probable answer that is movement of people from rural area to urban areas so i hope you have understood about this let us move on to the next one third question what is the cause of inflation the, what is the cause of inflation so there are a few topics in economy which are repeatedly asked first one is gdp related questions correct gdp gva etc how are the things different from others then there is factors of production etc which are being asked in the uh, in case of gdp or this uh, this particular chapter and then there is a banking chapter on which a lot of questions are being asked that is what are commercial banks what are regional rural banks what are payment banks how are those things different from each other then the other one is the qualitative and quantitative measures in which you get all these repo rate reverse repo rate bank rate slr uh, then cash reserve ratio etc and then there is balance of payment so these are one of the highly asked questions related to uh, when it comes to economy when it comes to static economy other than that there will be questions related to survey which will be asked and in that one of the most important topic is inflation now what is the cause of in inflation why does inflation occur whenever it comes to inflation i'll give you a trick for you to remember whenever any question comes related to inflation the result of inflation itself is because the money is more with public so when money is more with the public then there is inflation okay so the money is more in public this is a trick this is a trick okay that is money is more with public but along with this the production is less the production is less the money is more but the production is less that will lead to inflation so this is this is not textbook trick but it will help us in eliminating a lot of option and reaching the answer exactly so we'll understand about this in a little more detail so here the answer is increase in money supply and fall in production increase in money supply and fall in production now how do you treat inflation so treat this only when money is more with public reduce it from the public so reduce reduce the money supply from the public now how you will reduce it from the public that is by charging them by cha by giving more interest if the bank is giving more interest then people will start to put more money in the bank correct people will start to put more money in the bank correct and then the money supply itself will be less with the public so these things we'll understand about that in detail when we are discussing about economy we have discussed about that in previous parts when we were discussing different articles as well but here in this case you have to just remember money is more with public and the production is less you have to boost the production okay then the economy is treated correct if you have to if you boost the production then the economy is treated then there are a different qualitative and quantitative measures with help of which you will be treating the inflation so here the answer is c increase in money supply and fall in production will cause inflation now how do we understand inflation so let us understand the concept because if you are looking at the uh, if you are looking at the definition which is given by imf sometimes it might get a little confusing so let us understand from the basic let us say you are having rupees 100 in 2023 you are you are having rupees 100 in 2023 and in this rupees 100 you are spending let's say rupees 50 rupees 50 to buy let's say x y z chocolate you are you are buying x y z chocolate let's say remaining 50 rupees you are buying let's say a b c some other product a b c some other product so there is you are just having 100 rupees in 2023 and with the help of this 100 rupees you have bought one chocolate which is 50 rupees which is x y z chocolate which is 50 rupees and a b c product which is 50 rupees again it is a one product now let's say you are having the same amount you are having the same amount in 2024 you are having the same amount in 2024 
now the price of xyz chocolate you are having the same amount in 2024 at this point of a time the price you are still having 50 rupees but the price of this xyz chocolate xyz chocolate which was there has increased to 60 rupees last year for you have bought this chocolate for 50 rupees but this year you have to spend 10 rupees more for that how much it has increased by 10 rupees correct so the same product after one year you have to be paying more price you have to be paying more price and that is called as inflation so you can say that there is inflation over here because at this point of a time you are remaining with 40 rupees correct and let's say if the product abc also the price of this product has also increased to 60 rupees then you will not be able to buy that because you are having 40 rupees or you have to spend 20 more so the same product is costing more and that you can say as inflation that you can call it as inflation i hope you have understood the basics about this now next one you have two types of these one is demand pull inflation demand pull inflation and the second one is cost push inflation cost push inflation let us understand about these also in very simple terms so that it will be easier for us now as the name itself is saying that because of the demand there is inflation correct now let us say in india now let us say in india there are 100 people total uh, uh, total population of india itself is 100 people now all of these 100 people are wanting ice cream all of these 100 people are wanting ice cream but there is as we know limited supply of ice cream correct limited supply of ice cream let us say a b c are the only ice cream producers okay they are the only ice cream producers and everyone is wanting ice cream at that point of a time when everyone is wanting what happens the demand is more correct the demand is more let us say when not everyone were wanting at that point of a time ice cream was costing rupees 10 now when everyone is wanting the ice cream if the cost goes up even then the people will be buying correct now let us say if it is increased to 20 rupees even then people will be buying and because of this there is increase in price that is even if we are increasing the price even then people are buying because there is lot of demand everyone is wanting that is called as demand pull inflation i hope you have understood about this what is demand pull inflation because many people are wanting same thing or similar things and those things are limited and hence the demand for that is more and because of that the prices go up and because of that there is inflation because we have seen here the cost of ice cream has increased by 10 rupees even then people will be buying because these people a b c and will know that there is lot of demand and hence people will be definitely buying so that is demand pull inflation now let us take the example of ice cream only okay let us take the example of ice cream only again now there are various goods which are required to produce ice cream correct let's say there is milk which is required in order to produce ice cream there is sugar which is required to produce ice cream now the cost of these has gone up the milk has become costly the sugar has become costly so previously they were charging 10 rupees only but now the char the cost of milk and sugar itself is high and because the cost of milk and sugar is high in order to make a profit the ice cream has to be sold from previously 10 rupees to let's say 20 rupees because to produce this to produce this itself to produce this itself the input cost has become high correct the cost has not become high because of the demand but the cost to manufacture that itself has become high that is previously milk were costing let's say 1 rupees now they are costing 2 rupees okay then sugar were costing let's say 1 rupees now they are costing 3 rupees so the production phase itself will become costly and hence in order to make profits they have to be charging more and hence because of that the cost has been increased and because of this you can call it as cost push inflation here not everyone are wanting ice creams but even after that the cost is more because the input cost has increased so this is called as 
कॉस्ट पुश इन्फ्लेशन आई होप यू हैव अंडरस्टूड अबाउट डिमांड पुल इन्फ्लेशन एंड कॉस्ट पुश इन्फ्लेशन सो बोथ आर सिंपल ओनली इन केस ऑफ डिमांड वी टुक आइसक्रीम ओनली इन केस ऑफ कॉस्ट ऑल्सो वी हैव टेकन आइसक्रीम इट सेल्फ सो लेट एस मोन टू द नेक्स्ट वन नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन ग्रीशम्स लॉ इन एकोनॉमिक्स ग्रीशम्स लॉ इन एकोनॉमिक्स इज रिलेटेड टू हियर द आंसर इज सर्क्युलेशन ऑफ करेंसी let us understand this grishams law in very simple words like we are understanding the previous things i am just giving you very simple examples in order to understand the basic concepts so in this case also we'll understand what is grishams law now let us take an example of silver coin and gold coin so let us say abc is a person or let's say you are a person who is having both silver coin also and gold coin also now in economy both are accepted correct so the government has said or the rbi has said that both are the legal tender now we know that the silver coin also has value but gold coin has more value correct now whenever you go out in market to buy a product which one will you want to spend usually in economy silver coin is spent silver coin is spent because you will always want to retain this gold coin you will always want to retain this gold coin i'll give you another example so when you remember when this 20 rupees note was released by the government correct you remember you remember when the 20 rupees uh, note were released by the government it was very new at that point of a time and people were taking the pictures and they were putting it on instagram stories etc so it was very new at that point of a time if that person would go out and if he would buy something worth 20 rupees he would usually want to be giving rupees 10 2 of the rupees 10 rather than 20 because he knows that people are people are giving more value to 20 rupees note rather than the 10 rupees that is just an example so i am just giving you another example of silver coin and gold coin here the value of silver coin itself is less compared to the gold coin i am not telling silver coin is worthless but the value compared to the gold coin is less so if if a person is having silver coin and gold coin they will usually be spending silver coin only more so if abc is having silver coin and gold coin xyz is having silver coin and gold coin pqr is having silver coin and gold coin all of them will tend to spend silver coin only because the value of gold coin is more so what they will do they will hold the gold coin they will hold the gold coin or save the gold coin so eventually what happens is there will be only silver coin in circulation okay there will be only silver coin in circulation because gold coins are rarely used and they are used somewhere else that is what the grishams law says it says that when there are two types of money in circulation here let us take this one money and this one money when there are two types of money in circulation people will hold people will tend to hold or spend lower value money and keep the higher value money when there are two types of money in circulation people will usually spend the lower value money and keep the higher value money and that is that itself is the grishams law that is related to circulation of currency i hope you have understood about grishams law let us move on to the next question the law of demand states with increase in price what happens so it is asking straight away when the price is increase what happens decrease in the quantity demanded or increase in the quantity demanded decreased demand or increased demand here the answer is simple that is when the price of something goes up the quantity which it is demanded will be less the quantity with which it will be demanded is less that is the law of that is the law of demand now let us say there is a watch there is a watch the name of that watch is abc the name of that watch is abc okay so if the price of this watch goes up then you will restrain from buying it you will not be willing to buy it correct but when the value of this or the price of this watch watch comes down you will be wanting to spend there you are wanting to spend there so when the price increases the there is a 
demand the quantity in which the demand is decreases because abc if the prices come down if the prices are down then people who are having the surplus income will be wanting to buy that correct because the prices are less so if the prices are more they might wait for it to reduce or they might restrain from buying it so that is what is law of demand so according to this law there is an inverse relationship between price of good and quantity demanded that is price of good price of good and quantity demanded the quantity quantity demanded so that is if the price of good goes up then the quantity which is demanded comes down it uh, the quantity which is demanded comes down if the price of do goods comes down then the quantity which is demanded goes up so that is law of demands that that is what law of demand states so i hope you have understood about this so till now we have completed totally 15 most important questions i hope you are understanding the concepts as well in the next part we'll discuss five more important questions thank you i'll see you soon in the next one